What's going on today, guys? Let's get a look at the most exciting release from Jack Wolf Knives to date. You see it right there. Oh, this is all the goodness of Jack Wolf Knives that will appeal to everyone. We're talking fit and finish. We're talking performance. We're talking material choices. We're talking traditional patterns. This is a gunstock pattern. That's why Gunslinger Jack, look at this artwork here. Gunslinger Jack, so cool. Uh, if you can't see, the frame is modeled after the gunstock pattern, traditional pattern, and it looks like a shotgun gunstock. Super ergonomic. Is really comfortable in all grips. And then you pair it up with a perfect titanium frame lock folder that is pulling 10 thousandths behind the edge with S90V. Yep, this thing is a monster. When you cut with this thing, it is like a laser beam. It's folding laser beam. It, it cuts awesome 10 thousandths behind the edge. I don't know how else to say it besides you just need to experience it. To put it into perspective, you have to get into, in my experience, a custom regrind. Something like this from Tom Crine. There's a few others that are regrinding now to get performance of 10 thousandths behind the edge. This is coming factory, 10 thousandths behind the edge. So the cutting performance is there. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons while we're here. Trying to be a little speedy because I could talk about this knife for an hour straight. And I'd really like to try to take this thing down and show you the internals. You can see it next to the paramilitary too. Let's go butt to butt. Let's go cutting edge. I just think most people have these knives in their collection. And if you don't have either one of these, maybe you have a bug out. So there you go. About the same size actually. <clears throat> beautiful size for EDC. It is extremely lightweight in your pocket. These things are coming in at 2.9 ounces. You really don't even feel this thing in your pocket. Uh, it has a 3D milled clip. Well done. No hardware, no exposed hardware. There's obviously hardware on there, but nothing exposed. Uh, I want to try to take this thing down to show you the internals. It's really neat how they did it. Not doing anything super groundbreaking, but it's cool nonetheless. And uh, there's a few details. You can tell that they had really, really thought this design out. I like this backspacer. Comes all the way up to mimic like a backspring. But because it's titanium, they match the anodizing to match the cover. These are only coming in camo and fat carbon options. So since the little bro Jack right here. No more Micarta. Who knows what the future holds, but as far as right now, they're just doing carbon fibers. This is available in obviously the toxic green camo carbon. It comes in a dark matter gold fat carbon that has gold anodizing here and on the pocket clip. There is an Arctic storm, which is like a blue carbon fiber fat carbon fiber and it has blue anodizing on the clip and on the back spacer has a bazooka pink um and i can't remember what the anodizing is on that it might be blue i can't remember and uh purple haze and then the titanium back spacer titanium 3d milled clip is also purple on that one so bolster lock with a stainless steel insert there's no lock stick on this thing. Just absolute perfection. Check out how the blade uses up all of the frame. That tip is well sunk in there. You were not going to cut yourself. Detent is perfect. Not too tight. Not too loose. That makes for excellent front flipper action. And excellent rear flicking action. And an excellent, excellent rolling action. Obviously, you can still pinch it open if you prefer. It does come with a titanium plug. I'll show you in a second. 
so that you can carry this like a traditional knife deep down in your pocket without this 3D milled clip. I don't know why people would do that, but it does come with the plug and the plug is anodized to match your clip and all that. So if you don't want the clip on there, you obviously do not have to have it. Again, if I haven't pointed out, look at the recess for your thumb. A little bit of extra milling on this cover so you don't pinch your skin. And then this matches up perfectly here. So I really like that he didn't raise this front scale to make room. This keeps it very traditional feeling. But it's very easy to unlock as well. It's sitting on bearings. Again, we're going to take it apart in a second here. I just wanted to go over all the details, give you a tour around the knife. Remind you that is in S90V. 10,000s behind the edge, incredible cutter. Triple fluting that we've seen. I believe the first time we've seen it was on the Dr. Feel Good here on the bolster there. And uh, really well done. I like how he brought the front flipper back to match the back spacer here. And it just really retains that traditional look, the traditional feel, but in a modern one handed bearing open opening titanium frame lock again these are titanium frames that are milled out to accept these covers wow let's get this thing apart um there's a lot of chamfering around you can see it around the knife you can see it all the way around here really well done everything just fit and finish is absolute perfection as you would expect from Jack Wolf Nice. Looks like their first step into the modern folder market uh, is an absolute home run. Look at the blade centering on this thing. Front flipper, not crazy big. It's enough to do its job, but it's not so much to ruin the traditional look of this knife. Same with the clip. I feel like the clip was really well designed. It's not big and fat and rolling. It's not like there's big screws poked in it somewhere. Uh, it's just a 3D milled clip done to perfection. Kind of a low rider, only that much sticks out of your pocket. And it honestly doesn't look too much different than maybe a pen or something like that. It just looks really classy. I like how this angle that they terminated kind of matches the angle here. It just makes sense. It's a little more refined than just cutting it straight. You know, just a little bit of visual interest there. When it's closed, this is kind of slant this way. The flipper termination here is kind of slant this way. And it just feels like it's a cohesive unit, in my opinion. I just love this thing. Every, uh, you really can't thumb flick it like you could a stud. I don't know why I tried to. You can reverse flick it all day long. Again, the hollow grind on the blade matched up with these two fullers. Catch your skin on your finger right there and it's no problem to open it. Let's get this thing apart. Let's look at the internals. We did the size comparisons. 10 thousandths behind the edge. First, we're gonna pop off this front cover. with a T7. You can also, T8 fits in top of the screw. I think a T7 um, for me from this Weeha kind of fits down a little deeper into there. And then Ben Belkin himself said that this is how you, oh, this does not come with a pocket slip. With that clip, um, you don't need that slip so it's just added cost these are already 350 dollars uh, most people are not going to be using the pocket slip with this one he said you just tap it there it is popped right out oh it's a tight fit 
there you go. So you can see they individually number these things. I got 351. You will see on the scale, 351. These knives have a lot of hand labor in them. Do not think that they are just slapped together like most knives. You're paying for a premium product and you're getting a premium product. This is a T10 on the screw, the front pivot, and a T6 on the frames here. Again, I like Weehaw bits and Weehaw uh, Torx. I'm not gonna take this thing all the way down, but I wanna show you because I was super curious on the internals of this thing. Again, just such great fit and finish on this. Here you go. So on the website, uh, you can order extra skiff bearings. I don't think these are skiff bearings, but they already have the size and everything set to go. If you still wanted the Jack Wolf slip for an extra $40, you get a custom handmade slip with their logo in it. Um, links will be below for everything. Again, I think all of this stuff is gonna sell out um, within a few days. So if you're interested, hop on it. I know it's not cheap, but it is a premium product. I don't think anybody is competing in this space when you're talking 10 thousandths behind the edge. You're talking the one-handed opening and the titanium with the carbon fiber. <clears throat> this is a special knife. I'm gonna show you, they've really thought about everything. If you know titanium and you know your frame locks and bearings, you know that you should have a stainless washer in there and they do. That's a stainless track. I can't pop it out, but there you go. So that gives the bearing something nice and hardened to ride on. If you just rode it on the titanium, that could bite down into the titanium. And over time, your action will get a little bit stiffer with that hardened washer in there. That will not happen. So here's your internal stop pin. Again, you can see how this is all one piece of titanium just like any other frame lock. And here you go with the internals. You have your bearing on there, right? Let's set this over here. I don't wanna put it on the wood. There's your internal stop pin with your, gotta be careful, I don't wanna lose anything. So that rides on that track all the way around. Right, detent bites in. Again, look at that tip. Well done. Taking up the entire frame. And then when it opens, there's your stop pin. All internally done. I wouldn't want a baton with this knife. This is a gentleman's knife. You could hard use cut with it. Believe me, this is no slouch in the cutting game. Um, but I don't think you'd want a baton through some firewood. There's other tools for that. As a folding knife, in my eyes, this is EDC perfection. Absolutely, 10 thousandths behind the edge. I keep saying it because you just have to know how special that is. If you are a performance nerd like me, over time as I get more into knives and collecting and stuff, I just come to really appreciate thinly ground knives that cut well for EDC tasks. Again, talking harder use, talking stuff like that. I love my Spyderco Shaman, Shaman, you know, a little bit thicker. It kind of goes in the middle there. But uh, as far as thick pry bars, I don't really do too many of those anymore. If I do, I pair it up with something that slices well. So <laughs> this is just awesome here. You can see you're sitting on that pivot right there. It's trying to come out, but there you go. With your internal stop pin with your lock bar over travel stop and then of course your internal um, lock bar face so awesome well done you can see even the backspacer 357 uh just well done slow clap man this is an exciting knife 
Uh, I can't wait to see what the future holds. As far as I know, I know no more than you guys do. Um, I think this will probably not, if I had to guess, again, I don't know anything. I, this will probably not be the last one-handed version bearing folder from them. Um, but they're not done making traditional style knives either. So I don't think we'll see two knives released a month. But uh, it'll definitely be more and more of a surprise as the future carries on of what Jack Wolf is going to put out next. Just know it's going to be an awesome EDC piece, an awesome carry piece. Again, I say in all these videos, they're not just collector items. They can be, but they are meant to be carried and used. That's where their true value, in my opinion, really shines. Here's the packaging. Gunslinger Jack. Again, you have your pog in here. Love that. Sean Tiffany art. And this time we have an orange microfiber i went ahead and took the um sticker out so i wouldn't have to fight with it oh i'll show you inside here too is that tab here's the sticker i'm your huckleberry <laughs> awesome marketing and also ben is just such an awesome guy if you get on his newsletter from the site links will be below um if you're tracking down one of these models he will try to put you in touch with uh, a dealer who still has one in stock. If you're looking for a specific cover option, uh, he will try to get you in touch. He even has his phone number on there where you leave him a voicemail and he'll call you back. <laughs> I mean, come on. Incredible. Uh, so you get that plug in here is what I was going to show you. And oh, I hit it from you. It was a magic trick. Had it folded up in the back there. So here's the plug that you would put on the, let's not lose anything here, on the clip side. And how you would change that is uh, this screw right here. You just unscrew that, and that is the single screw. Let me do that real quick for you because this is just another level of detail that nobody would ever really expect, and it's there. I noticed it because I've already poked around this knife. That's not an easy milling job for a 3D milled clip to mill out that ridge so it sets down. Again, I don't want to lose anything. It sets down into the knife for registering. What I'm talking about is this little ledge right here. Do you see how that pokes out? That pokes down into the hole perfectly. And it just helps you make sure that this clip is not going to pull up and out because that ridge, again, I thought I felt the bearing on my finger, it went up there. This ridge will stop it from wanting to push up and down. That takes all the pressure off. Again, I, I just wouldn't have thought about that. He, this knife is incredibly well designed. It's full of little things like that that you don't even see until you start poking apart and exploring it. And then that's internally milled with no um exit that's not an easy milling process if you bought this clip for any other knife that you have any spider co a 3d clip like that i have a couple around here um this clip would be 50 dollars on its own when you're talking about milling like this you're talking about the anodized titanium that fits perfectly into there and uh, i mean it should come with it but on top of that they also have a plug even Chris Reeves Sabenzas charge you extra for that clip cover. So it, it's it's just well done. You can tell that they are knife nuts first and producing the very best knife that they would want in their collection. And then they're offering it to sell to the general public in limited runs. So well done, slow clap. I love that they get it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Again, slow clap, well done. Oh, there's that little stainless um, washer popped out. Again, even that. They could have easily cut the corner and had this bearing riding on the titanium. That's not the right way to do it. This is 
hardened steel washer that goes in there to give you that smooth action all the way through. Well done. They didn't have to put the over travel stop on there. They did. They didn't have to do the internal lock face. For no stick, they did. You see in it here, even uh, the way the knives are, they're numbered for each other. These are hand fit items. These are hand inspected items. They all get hand seen by Ben Belkin himself, the owner and operator, the guy you talk to if you call the number. He sees all of them. That's why they're all perfect. There's some that do get refused, not many, but they do get refused because they're not dead center, because the action's not perfect. So guaranteed, if it gets your hand, if it hit the retailer, they're perfection all the way down. Any knife, their first run to their last run, it's hard to not recommend them if you're in the market for something like this. Incredible cutter. I just had to say it one more time. 10,000s behind the edge. Guys, I appreciate you hanging out. See ya.